Hey everybody, it's Cinnamon Cooney, your art sherpa, and welcome to day three. Day three of Acrylic April. It's only day three, and we're all still here. So today we're going to be painting the fabulously cute red coffee cup with the heart inside of it. We have our canvas already painted gray with our grid on it. If you're looking for those, remember to go to the artsherpa.com art under the videos tab find the project for that day and you'll find all those extra resources as soon as they're available and i always try to make sure that they're ready ahead of time so that you can be prepped and ready for the next day i'm so excited to get into this Are you excited to get into this i am acrylic april has been blowing my mind i've been out on social media so Ooh. many good people check out the other creators that are doing stuff because there's some people putting some cool stuff out there before we jump in mm. could, could you tell them what we're going to be doing uh tell them where to find the resources didn't I just do that when okay. I said the website on yes. uh, the videos? Um, you know, I'm, I'm multi -tasking. Also, so you I'm could check the description below. There's a link that goes directly to this page's resources. So if you want today's projects, you open that up. There's 50,000 little characters down there that they give me in a packet, a packet full of so much information, including links to what you need, materials, all of that stuff. So check out the website, the and in the description below. Absolutely. <laughs> okay. Marriage. <laughs> All right, you ready? Just, can you tell that? I just did. Yep. All right, I'm going to flip it around. All right. Okay. I certainly wasn't stalling while I was getting that picture loaded. Really? No, not at all. Oh, okay. Well, I, I did just make you switch up from the lemon, so that's a reasonable thing. All righty then. So here we are. We have our 8x8. Eight eight. It's already laid out. It's already gridded. I sketched in with my chalk, so that's going to disappear nicely in there. And I feel like we're going to just get on into this cup today because it's been, it's been pretty good. I'm really impressed with what everybody's doing. Yeah. Me I'm going to, I'm going to grab a number eight cat's tongue. You could use a number eight bright or a number eight filbert or a number eight flat, whatever you have on you. More important that you paint with it. I'm going to go ahead and get this a little bit wet and I'm going to mix together my brown and my black. And you'll notice it's kind of loose. It's more towards the black, but it's loosely mixed. And I'm going to just go ahead and paint around my cup. Kind of neatly. Not too worried about it. This very, very dark color. And I love that the gray is underneath it. So if anything pops through, the gray will pop through. You can see I'm just kind of doing an angular brush stroke. And just pulling that through. Dipping in again, a little bit of brown, some black. And you'll know something is loosely mixed if we're not like swirling it around together. What we're basically doing is just letting the, the paint mix on the canvas and the brush. Gotcha. That's all we're doing. Mixing the paint on the canvas and the brush. <laughs> Sorry, I love you so much. You crack me up. <sighs> we've had a warning. We've, we've, we've been multitasking. Well, yeah, I'm doing my homework. Not homework. I don't want to call homework. You guys have to remind me not to do that. Prep my, work. My prep work. My prepping artwork um, to make sure you guys have those resources if you need them. And so we're trying to figure out when we can get those filled in. And I think today we tried to do it before this video. Yeah. So I'm actually almost warmed up. Yeah. Or I am not. <laughs> that was clear, wasn't it? Some days. So as I'm going to come forward into this space, I might get, you know, just pulling this around. This is a fairly dark value, fairly dark color that you might have. Just a little brown and a little black. Burnt sienna and a little Mars black. Just painting that around there. I don't love that, right? Yeah. I do. I love it. There we go. So that leaves even a little bit of room to be playful. I can come in here, my little brown and my little black, and then I can even get a little smidge of white into that. And go ahead and brush through a little bit of texture. We're not really painting wood or anything particular. We're just giving some personality to that space and brushing softly. 
And what you're going to be learning to do here is to load your brush just enough. That's right? interesting. What do you mean just enough? So I think sometimes what happens when we're very new and we're trying to figure out how much paint to put on the brush, we get large amounts of paint and we mm. work large amounts together. And you'll yeah. even see me grab too much and be like, well, I got too much pigment there. I'm going to need to move a light back over there because that's that the palette's a little dark today. Is it? Um, yeah, we got to get another light back over there, I think. Okay. All right, so I'm just going to, so it's just about realizing you only need a little bit of paint or, you know, or, or the rare times that you do need a lot, but getting a sense of how much paint is on your brush is a good thing to start kind of paying attention to and seeing if you can get a little handle on, right? A little handle on that. Just getting some personality going in here. I like getting some backgrounds with a little personality important to do those and so you can get into the, the brown and then it sort of just pops oh yeah against the background if you get the pure pigment on there Ooh, look at that i'll just brush this in this what i'm doing here is giving a lot of energy to what is a very still still life and sometimes when our still lives are very still as a cup of coffee or peaches is we can use the direction of a brush stroke or texture to create a little movement and a little drama in what would be an otherwise very quiet piece. Hmm, that makes you sense. want a little. And go in there. That's kind of lovely, right? Yeah. So fun stuff. Now, we have this beautiful red cup to paint in. And I'm going to do an interesting thing. You can use either your black and your red to, uh, to go through your values or your blue and your red. I'm going to see what my phthalo blue and red will do together because I think it will be interesting and I'll reserve the black for those areas that I need to really deepen or pop out. Gotcha. So I'm going to come in and start to work maybe some of my darker values. And you can see if you get your primary blue into your red it darkens it quite a bit see how that almost makes it a brick color All right so you've got your primary blue your vermilion your cad yellow medium your naples yellow your burnt sienna your mars black and your titanium white but you could have different other colors the idea would still be essentially the same and so i'm going to find areas where i feel like there's a very dark value that i'm going to be painting and I'm going to go ahead and locate those and put those in a few places. And I've got one right here at the top of the handle. Just that right there. Using the brush to work that around. See another little dark spot kind of curving right here. So it's about where, where are the light values and where are my dark values when you're trying to shape something out there's definitely a little dark value right here and i can even come in and deepen that a bit i can take this around somewhat the edge we can always pop it up a little bit lighter as we need to yeah, we're just coming around this inside lip of the coffee cup in perspective. Just curving the brush stroke. A little bit of this right here. Oh, a little darker there. That's nice. Let's go that deep right there. We had a darker area to work out. So I like that extra in there. Extra! Let it be a little bit extra. Yeah. Let it be a little bit extra in your life. Find those dark, 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 dark values and talk about them just a little bit. Come here to the front of the cup. Oh, I like that against the gray. One of the things I was noticing through this process as we've been doing this is that it's very interesting how, uh, like these purples, when you're close to them, you can really tell that they're purple and violet and complex. Mm -hmm. But as I back up, they become shadows. Right. It's super fun, right? It's a purple, the shadow nose. 
But yeah, the purple shadows are always sort of fun. It just disappears into the... And, it, and it's just kind of bouncing between the, the amount of red that you put in the mix and then coming up and softly adding maybe a little bit more blue, which, you know, knocks it back. Because remember what side of the color wheel these are on. Regardless of their bias, their overall aspect is cool. So overall, they will recede. And since we're not playing this, um, you know, against, you know, a, a ultramarine or another blue that might have a warmer bias, that's really pretty simple in our piece right now. I'm going to come over here and get some of that dark value. I have a jar in my way, looking at my reference and my jar is in my way. You're kind of putting that edge shadow in there. Yeah, just catching these different little darker values in the cup. And then, you know, as I'm coming forward, I can come into a little more red and blend these in, see? It's not really blend. It's just kind of put it in. I'm down there. I like to just pay attention. My brush pressure is fairly light right now. I'm not trying to bring this in. I might have to put that value back as I'm as I'm brushing through the cup. That makes sense. Coming in here. So I feel like I lost a little bit of a, a value step that I had there. But I'm not going to worry about it because I can come back pretty easily. And get it put in. So if I want to come back with this darker aspect through here, I can pretty come right in and do that. Where I've got to really step it up, I've got black, so I'm okay. I feel like there's this really dark kind of reflection that's happening on the cup right here. I don't know if you can see it, but I do, and it totally, you know, comes in and appeals to me. I'm sort of deep in the watching of the switching right now. I know. See, well, you got to switch. I'm too. I like. I'm. I'm over here trying to read. Like chat's kind of cruising along. We got a lot of folks here today, so thank you guys for joining us. It's uh, they're they were asking if uh, we're gonna go back to putting labels on again tomorrow. Uh yes, yes. There was just some. Uh, um, Technical. I had done something that was confusing about the labels, and I hadn't managed to resolve it before this show, and I didn't want to. Uh, messed a couple of people who were confused by the labels up again. So, but I will try to get them back by tomorrow. So, there's folks are like, yeah, that'd be pretty cool. We thought that was a neat. I I liked it too. <laughs> I just like had um, called something phthalo blue that in this line of paint is primary blue, but because I know PB15 is phthalo blue, I called it phthalo blue. PB15 is a pigment code. It's the true. It's the true nature of all paint is the pigment code. You're speaking pigment to me now. I am. You know me. I will get into that. Now I'm going to come along here and start to lay in this lovely little red edge and brush this in. Fun to do. And where I need to come back with more blue, I just come back in. Isn't that fun? It is. I'm liking this cup today. I needed this cup. You needed this cup. I needed this cup, man. I needed it. Needed it. Needed it so much. Try and it's the the colors that you're working with there mm -hmm. are right on the border of where I have to adjust up and down the uh, camera iris to see the subtle differences between violet and gray. As yeah. Turns, as you start to black out and oh, that's tone interesting. Out like I wouldn't have thought that that would have been too challenging. It's. But I hear you that it could be really challenging. It, it's really interesting because in 
in with the camera is how you tilt the surface affects how the camera sees it so that one camera can see the image differently than the one next to it. And we have two of the exact same cameras looking at this. So, and they're adjusted pretty much identically. Uh, they're just having their little moment in relationship to the color. Yeah. Now, some of these values I will be pulling up into a... Um, higher space but right now i'm just trying to block in remember if you watch the gritting in video you know i was like ah cup handle <laughs> not my friend well i think it was that potter <laughs> you blame the potter. like no it was not you it was the potter i love you so well, I mean, you're very supportive seriously have you seen how many times you have to throw a pot before you get one right I... just a couple haven't done it I've done it too. You got it right faster than me too. I did. I wasn't going to point that out. <laughs> I <laughs> no. I wasn't going to bring it up. I felt like we had moved past that. <laughs> oh, oh no! I'm I'm I am a total. I embrace my my wonky pottery. It's my signature move. <laughs> you know, overly thick walls and wonky <laughs> handles. That's how you know it was me. All right, so I've got to do a little frothy foam. I'm going to take my uh, burnt sienna into my Naples yellow here, and I'm going to mix up the beginnings of some frothy foamness. Frothy foamness. Frothy foamness. See? Frothy foamness. Coming along here, and there's some interesting shadows that happen even in the foam that I'm looking forward to thinking about. Is this a cadmium-free foam? This is all cadmium-free. Because cadmium I was like, oh, I'm going to paint cadmium-free for acrylic April. That'll be fun. <laughs> good, for the, good for everybody. It'll be fun. Ah, oh, I miss my cadmium. Uh, the reason I, I miss my cadmium is the color is just so saturated. And you don't really have to work very hard to get something to pop. I'm just trying to come through here. You see, I've got this nice light beige that I'm painting in in this space, and I'm brushing that in. That gets sort of blocked in. I can come in with this sort of latte color that we have, and I'm going to come get a little black, deepen it, a smidge, and I will come through this side and add the foam shadow. There's a little shadow of foam. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. Now, if you're at home and you don't have uh, the particular brush that you've got there. Oh, just use, just use a bright or a flat or a filbert. You know, any brush that gives you a lot of control. We have a bright in this list and, you know, any of them are fine. I'm going to grab some more Naples on this side. Come over here. And, and there were some folks in, in, in chat asking about some other DIY ideas on brushes. And what I just generally say, guys, is feel free to experiment, but to know that you're experimenting and one of those... Don't do it on a good brush that you can't replace. Yeah. Acrylic is hard on brushes and, and acrylic brushes are designed to handle that. We we work with our brush manufacturer for a long time to make sure that these could do the kind of stuff that we try to do. And we're always working on refining that and working with them to make it better and better. So you can find tools out there that are interesting. And I think acrylic April is a great time to experiment. Grabbing but, more Naples as we go. You know, know that those, uh, that you're experimenting and expect that in your results. <laughs> <laughs> I say that often to my children. Well, you know, you can find out. You can do anything. It's uh, just, whether you can get predictable results with it. And my son will come back like all this ground, it went wrong. I'm like, well, you know. <laughs> Love you, but Mommy well, said that and, wouldn't work on the slime. But all the time, stuff comes up that I did not expect. Like, oh, I did not. You could do that. That's really cool. Well, you can't limit somebody's like ability to like, you know, uh, play with everything and and experiment. I want to do something here in the background while this is having a little bit of a dry. Having a little dry. Yeah. So I'm going to take a little bit of my blue and a little bit of my black together, stronger to the blue. And maybe a bit of my white into that. See, just very little. 
And I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna just brush over it some blue. I'm doing very lightly. And the reason I'm doing this is I just felt like I wanted a cool background against this red cup and that the that the wood was just not giving me that the kind of browns in the woods. But what's lovely is that by it being underneath it kind of gives us some interesting dynamics that we can play with. That up there that has some white. You know what we're doing? Yeah. I think that that's going to help everything pop. Playing with some color. But again, there's nothing wrong with the brown, so you can leave some of it showing through just what's near the cup I want to take into this cool space. If I may. You, well, you may. Grab a little bit of that white. Not too much, because you don't want to take it into too light of a value. Just light enough where if you put a dark shadow over it, you could see it. I find it's best to sneak up into the white. And again, remember that you don't have to take out all the brown that you put in, all that background. You'll notice when I'm going around the cup, I tend to kind of neatly do the stroke and then pull the strokes out. Let's get a little more of our white. Oh, that's nice. I like that better. Much, much, much better. It's a smaller surface than we normally work with. Oh, yeah. It frees me out. <laughs> like, where is well, this? I guess that's keeping up the pace. I mean, we're, yeah. we're just now approaching 22 minutes. So this it, is a much faster surface to work on. It, it is. And when you're trying to do, you know, daily painting, sometimes it's nice to have that. All right. Do we like how that's looking? I think by the time we pull it into the bright red, we'll really, really enjoy that. And you can always just come with some stronger, stronger compliments and process here. Play nicely against each other. There we go. Rinse out thoroughly. And it's probably a good idea to change your water often. Yeah. Just so that your, uh, the pigment in your water isn't impacting the pigment on what you're working on. All right, so we've got the center heart, okay. which I feel is a bit of the cad yellow hue and the burnt sienna. Just finding the right range for that heart, right? Wait, it's just a little bit yellow, but okay, there it is. Doesn't look like much on the palette, and then you get it into the foam. I noticed that during the um, little practice paintings, that this little heart looks better if it has strong yellow component to it. And that helps with the undertones that are coming through? Yeah, I think so. Now I've got everything sort of what's called blocked in. I know where stuff is. In relationship to each other, I may switch to maybe my number eight Cambridge. This is just a bright brush. It's just a nice little bore and synthetic filament brush. And I may start coming in and talking about, let's like, I get a little of my red here. And I'm going to use my yellow for the most part now to lighten the red. So red. It's, this is one of those smaller surfaces, so you're going to have to feel free to move it around so you're not having to contort yourself. You have to remember that. Oh, yeah, I've got to do that. It's, it's hard for well, me to remember it's, that. Well, it's, it's, sometimes it's easier for me to remember because you, you tend to bend your body into the way of the camera when you're not, when you're not comfortable. And so that's how I know you're, because it's like, hey, you're getting in my shot, which means that you're not paying attention to your own, you know. Space, what I got going on. Yeah. So it's kind of, it's kind of good because I'm like, hey, 
Watch your posture. Watch my posture. I don't know, man. <laughs> I'm not adding any white to this because I am in no way going to just come Actually, here. And... That's a super good thing. To, I know we're at 25 minutes, but it's a super good thing to touch on that posture is important so you don't have sports injuries during these long paint a -thons. Yeah, paying attention to how you're sitting, how you're standing, how you're holding your neck and shoulders is a big deal into how um, you are able to sustain a long painting journey. And like an NFL coach, man, I know about making sure you got to take care of your athlete because if we don't, if Cinnamon doesn't watch it, she will lean over and just her shoulder will go out. Yeah. Just so fast. So Elbow, fast. shoulder. Uh-huh. So it's the whole, the whole thing. We're invested in making sure that you know that she, you know, her, her, she stays in good painting form. Always a good thing. Stay, stay in good painting form, my friends. Stay thirsty. <laughs> stay thirsty. I don't know why I am quoting that. I don't know because it, it's rattling around in our pop culture brains. It does all the time. I think of that way more than I should. I'm going to come along here with this red. So you can see what I'm doing is just trying to build up my layers, find my values. This is starting to become an island. So I'm going to get some of my blue into my red. No paint is an island. Right. I haven't rinsed out my yellow, so it's going to neutralize it a little bit more. See? Yeah. Because there's a primary in there. Oh, neutralizing. That's how it kind of, I see what you're saying. Yeah, it that's kind of how it's it's turning grayish and, and it, it, it's muting the the brightness of that red. Right, which is what we need when we're trying to say that there's there's a bit of a shadow afoot, but this is still a bright saucer. Oh, what are you talking so about? Cool. That's kind of I'm kind of working that. I have to say that a lot little of little lip. I've been here for four years or more. I don't know how long it's been. A while, but. <laughs> I'm I'm to say I'm learning more about color this last year than I have ever before. Well, we've been talking I think about it more than we've ever ever talked about it before to our entire community. And then come into this little lip here. Maybe I, I thought it was just that I was paying attention more. You are paying attention more, but we've made a lot more content about color and medium and many many more videos and lessons. Just coming along here with my little break. I want to catch uh, an ever-brightening uh, red around this little lip because this would be the most in the light. So that's what I'm going to have to really showcase, yeah. show off. One of the things that you get from painting um, a large single brush and working it out is getting a little control going over your pressure, you know, the things that you're doing. Really learning how to have to work those angles. Adding a little blue back in. Because I'm coming along here and having to talk about that in that kind of a way. Coming back. There we go. Now along this edge, there's this little shadow and I'll build it up. Now, are you, what is that? You're using... The blue and, and the red. Yeah, I'm using the primary blue and the red. And that's kind of making it's like a it value all, study almost. It's just kind of disappearing into the shadow space. Mm-hmm. That's neat. Which is really what we need it to kind of do. And I don't want to just use black. You could, if all you have is black, you could use that. I won't tell on you. But this is about how to do it with color. You want to do it with a little more color than that. Oh, could, is this chromatic black? It is chromatic black, someone who took the big art quest. Hey. Hey, how you I doing? I remembered a term. All right, I'm bringing this little red there. here. Oh, wrong camera. I think I kind of went a little wide with it. I'm not going to freak out too much because it's about... Just catching. This is such a good piece for just thinking about my values and how those relate to each other. Like making sure that this part of the mug is still dark enough. And I'm about to sneeze. So if I sneeze in y'all's ear, I apologize. I'll have to like, we'll 
when, when you're getting close to a sneeze, I'll try to mute you. I'll tell you then if I caught the mute on time, that way we can maybe make fun of the funny sneeze. Making that dark mic. value back. So wherever I lose a dark value, I try to put it back. You know, if I've got something where it's gotten away from me. In here, you know, I want to make sure that it's well painted, isn't thin on the paint. So I need to create good edges. All right, sure, but you're at 30 minutes. All right, I'm going, I'm going. I'm just letting you know, you're, you're <laughs> put, holding yourself to the, the time. I probably. am. It's hard, though, isn't it? Yeah. It's hard to hold yourself to the time. So you got some foam stuff still. I got foam. I have a shadow up front. Let's get some shadow going up front. I'm going to take a, really just my black and my blue, but mostly my black. So this is an interesting thing. I'm, I'm, I'm going to come right here. It. I find that I'm doing it also to your painting. So maybe you could talk about that as you approach that deadline, you're going to start curating what you do to the painting. Yeah. Which which piece is the most, prior, Which like you just decided that it really needed to have that dark value down there. I felt like it did. Why did you, and, and that, so that was, that was like, got to get that in there because that's a, that's going to be a big. It's going to be a big thing for how, how the piece looks and getting that nice transition. Ah, it's hard. So I want to fuss. I don't know if you all want to fuss too, but boy, I want to fuss when I'm in here. So, and that's the great part of this discipline here is that you're going to learn some <sighs> some areas of where where it's one out. touch makes a big difference versus having to fuss. <laughs> so much fussy fuss. Fussy fuss, 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 fuss. All right, I'm going to add a little bit of my brown into that. Into what? What was that? Into my Naples. I'm going to come here and just talk oh. a little bit about my... Foam, got some lighter areas through here. You know, if you wanted to catch every bubble, we don't really get to do that on a daily painting. All we really get to do is catch a little bit. I'm gonna get a little more white into that foam, into that Naples yellow and brown. We've gotta really catch it. As we can, where we can. Brown, adding a little foam. Foaming. You know, I got a little browner there, so I don't know how far I want to take take it forward. And I've got this darker shadow here, where it's a lot more brown and a little black. And come here and be like, no, 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 no. There's a little value in the foam. I've got to think about. That's oh, hard. Gosh, that, that shadow just like whoosh, whoosh, appeared. I got to get my, I feel like I need a deeper, a deeper brown in there. I'm going to take my brown again and some of my yellow. I feel like there's a strong yellow component to that. that I want to not lose. Even as I come towards the center and darken that up. So Margaret was asking. Hi, Margaret. How you doing? I'm freaking out. How you doing? She says, does John mean Mars black? John means Mars black. I have no idea. Did he I means say Mars something black. You could do this with carbon. You could do this with, you know, so one of those. Did it, you put, absolutely. In, in, let me ask you this. In that lower corner, did you use black to tone that down there? Here or here? No, down, way, way down there at the bottom. Here, yes. Black and blue. Ah, yeah, okay. And which so I'm going to come and I'm going to get just a little blue on there, huh? That was the little black right over there. Yeah. That's what that was about. Okay, I got to get this. I got to get this weird red in here. Oh, that red highlight. Oh, man, I really need it too because, like, the handle isn't going to show if I can't get it kind of in. And then I have this coming up part of it where it's coming up from the. Thing and then on the back side, oh, we're cheering for you, Sherpa. Do it, I can do it. You can do it. I can do it, man. I'm gonna bring a little more of the red right there. Come here and put a little fourth of more red right here. Can I also? All right, um, take some of the cup.
just catch it there. I know I need it right here. Who needs NASCAR when you have the touch high pressure that, antics? That of front red right there. Of acrylic painting <laughs> live. On timed. On a timed daily paint. <laughs> As she rounds the corner of that cup, will she crash? I'm gonna. Stop it. <laughs> <laughs> I crash, but I could. See, I'm I'm trying to. Mm, like, that's too. Like, it's too bright. Build. I wanted to catch something there, but that was just too much. I don't know that we need any more suspense than what we've got. Truly, don't man. I feel I feel the suspense myself. Do you? Yo. <laughs> Are you are you feeling it? I'm trying to make quick decisions here. I mean, but even let's be honest, like even on my YouTube show, I kind of tend to tootle along. I mean, like seriously. And you guys are like, you're painting fast. I'm like, not compared to some artists. It's it's not like you've got like 600 of your closest friends hanging out watching you do this live under pressure. It's important to come and catch these little edges and bits if you want the piece to look how it needs to have some pretty strong value transitions so you've got to commit to where you can put those and in a minute i'm gonna have to get into some red i mean some white this lip still needs a better i just rinsed Sorry, out i wiped off and this lip still needs a better red okay. i'm gonna load up see if i can catch it oh you're just putting a, just a little fiery edge right there on it yeah where i'm trying to talk about how it turns No, and I will. My brush is a little fluffy. My brush is so fluffy. Fluffy brushes. Fluffy brushes. Sometimes you. And I think that if I come here with this value, turn the cup maybe here so I can see it, I'm going to carefully. Separate these two by a shadow. Someday I'm going to give that camera a robotic arm. That's going to what? So it can reach around and Me? underneath and get the angle. All right. Now, shadows and highlights. Yes. So, dark shadows. I'm going to use my blue and black again for my dark, 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 dark shadows. So blue, black, against each other more to the blue. I'm going to come under the cup. And up to where that handle is. That's got one. Ooh, that's looking nice. Uh, that's pretty strong, right? Yeah. Maybe put one right here. These dark, dark ones. Trying to exaggerate some of what we've got to deal with. And then hopefully when I come put the highlights on, it will all become a cup. You're doing it pretty good. You're at, you know, you're coming in. Okay. Now I'm going to just use my round. I need some precision here. I'm so not willing to deal with the... <laughs> Fluffy brush Precision anymore. Precision guided paint tool. It's a, it's a number what? Number four round. Number four round. Yeah. Your implement of illusion. Nice is there's enough uh, blue and purple there where that kind of does that, which is pretty cool. I actually like that, so I'm going to get more. I think that's a good reflection color. <laughs> How did you so I just went into the purple, uh, which is the the primary blue and the vermilion. Mm -hmm. and I'm making this sort of like purple color. It is interesting there. To talk about this. And then I can always come back and add a, a pop of highlight, but that will help me maybe transition some of those a little bit. Like there's this one on the inside. I can talk about that here. And then... 
there's another one on the inside. Maybe I can talk about that here. Coming around here. And then there's this big one that comes through here. We've got those happening around that side. Oh, I like that little outer edge right there. Oh, getting poppy. Yeah. All right, rinse out. I am. I know I'm being quiet. I'm just trying to figure out where my little lips are. Mm. You're just looking for those highlights. Where would they be? This is my favorite part on like glass and stuff. Or to be steady and fast. Oh, wasn't. Darn it. <laughs> I will knock that back with the purple that I had here earlier. That's how I'll trim that up. That's going to happen on occasion. A line that you were really trying to be refined about gets away from you. Okay. This this one is not easy. Coming on this outside edge and we're creating this little highlight. So I'm just trying to make decisions, the essential decisions, and I feel like John is being very polite, not telling me that my clock is like having a moment with me. What do you mean? Well, because you haven't said, oh my gosh, it's your time. Oh, no, it's like you're at 42 minutes. All right, I think we should, that's, it. we got three total, three more minutes, because I had kind of tried to, it got away from me the other day. I really wanted to keep these two, 45 to 30 minutes. Well, see. But an hour is reasonable. Truth be told, I don't know that I could let you go too much more than 45 minutes, because I had too many cups of coffee this morning. <laughs> Sorry, it's funny. I'm not, I'm not laughing at your suffering. <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm we're, not, I'm not laughing at your suffering. At <laughs> your suffering does not amuse me thoroughly. <laughs> you may be left on one camera for a while. Hi. Right. Is, but you're actually, this is just coming together really fast. Yeah, I think this is, I think this is at a good place. I think this is a, if you're talking, you know, I'm, loose daily painting, I feel like I can sign now. I'm going to. What are you hmm. thinking? I'm thinking I'm going to get into that purple. I think that'll make a nice signature color. Yeah? Yeah. But I don't want to sign. Well, I can sign with this brush. I'll sign with this big boy. I'm going to come right here. I think with signatures, what's important is to realize that they're part of the composition. It is important that people know who made the painting, but do think a little bit about how it impacts the design because you worked really hard to do something. You know, you've committed to doing a little painting every day. You're really putting in the time. Maybe you're putting in the effort. You wouldn't want to undermine that with like a crazy signature that, that just destroyed the whole design. And that can happen. So it's like making it legible and having it be there, but not having it be where like that's all you see. All right. Put it Boom. Oh, okay. Over here, don't oh, that looks really good. That does look good. I'm really happy with that. Yes. Mm -hmm. Finally, the way in. So day three, day three, we're going to chugga, 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 chugga. We face our fears. We put them down. We're on the coffee cup. Uh, John has, uh, uh, when we exit out, you can see uh, the lemons, which is tomorrow, which is day four. If you go to their uh, webpage and you look uh, very imminently, I finished this morning the grid and the color studies. So like as soon as we can wire those in, you'll have those. Um, 
hold on a second there. Wait, uh, doo -doo -doo. where did that go? And then, um, just, I, I wanted you to have the end screen. We're going to oh, make yeah. sure you guys have I an end that. screen that tells you about it. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Look at that. I just didn't know that. Yeah. Let's do that. I did it, Jance. I did oh, it. Yeah. I did it. I painted. I painted. Did it every day. Did it every day. I painted. I painted. I freaked out. I freaked out. But I kept painting. I kept painting. I freaked out. I freaked out. But I kept painting. I kept painting. Okay, that's funny. All right. I'm so weird. Hopefully you're weird too. So that's not, you're like, oh yeah, I know that weird. I'm that weird too. Be good to yourselves. Be very kind about your art in this journey. It, it, you're so brave to be on it. At anytime anyone puts brush to a canvas, I think that they're a hero. I think they're so brave. Such a wonderful act of courage because you really put yourself out there anytime you're creative. Be good to yourselves. Be good to each other. And I want to see you at the easel really soon, especially for day four, 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 four. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.